Aloha and good evening. We are the University of Hawaii and we'd like to recommend a buy position for Hawaiian Electric Industries with an 11% upside, a safe, attractive 4.9% dividend yield, and a reduced, uh, reduced risk profile, a positive regulatory environment, growth driven by CapEx, as well as a strong net income from American Savings Banks support our valuation. Per 2011 net income, 46% of HEI was attributed to the financial services portion of the company, while 54% was the result of the utility's performance. This company serves as a proxy for a pure play Hawaii investment as it is core to the state's energy and financial infrastructure. We approach the valuation of HEI using the sum of the parts method based on five considerations, different industries, regulatory environments, risks, capital structures, as well as a lack of synergies. For these reasons, we felt it was most appropriate to treat the valuation of the company separately and subsequently add them together. Hawaiian Electric is at the heart of a clean energy revolution and is accelerating at a pace such that investors must take notice. It is critical that the state reduce their dependency on fossil fuels and begin investing in their future now. Since its inception in 1891, Hawaiian Electric has developed into the most powerful vertically integrated monopoly in the state. However, it is still over 91% dependent on fossil fuels. The current infrastructure, as well as the isolation of the islands, limit fuel options to low sulfur fuel oil from Japan, which trades at a substantial premium. This leads us to the Hawaii Clean Energy Initiative. The first key driver we have identified for the electric utility is the relative strength of the Hawaii economy. As the state's only electric utility, economic conditions in the state flow directly into the firm. The state of Hawaii is relatively healthier than the U.S. mainland and going forward is expected to grow faster than the nation as a whole. Additionally, the state's iconic tourism brand is uniquely positioned to capitalize on growth around the Pacific. While Hawaii is still an attractive destination for both U.S. and Japanese visitors, going forward growth will be driven by emerging markets including China following recent changes to the visa process. For an investor who wants Hawaii specific exposure, HECO is the best pure play option. The most important driver to our valuation of HECO is the new decoupling regulatory model. HECO is mandated by law through the Hawaii Clean Energy Initiative to generate at least 40% of its electricity from renewable sources by the year 2030. This is up from only 10% last year. As a result, they will be making $2.2 billion in capital expenditures to develop new renewable systems. In order to ensure that the firm remains profitable, the state energy regulator has implemented a decoupling regulatory model that separates the dollars HECO collects in revenue from the amount of electricity they actually sell. The bottom line is that HECO collects two important benefits. First is an explicit revenue guarantee that allows electricity rates to float to ensure that HECO can recover all of their operating costs as well as a return on invested capital. The second is a streamlined regulatory model that automatically adjusts electricity rates each year to take into account cost inflation without any need for a lengthy or difficult rate increase petition. HECO, <clears throat> HECO's revenues have been smoothed, their margins are stabilized, making them significantly more profitable and with a much more sec secure dividend. HECO's res revenues are adjusted through the decoupling mechanism. What this means is that demand can stay flat or decline and revenues will rise as long as costs of generation continue to rise. We expect that margins will track historical averages due to heavy utility regulation. We expect that HECO's EPS numbers will climb along with rising revenues. Post decoupling, we project that ROE will climb and stabilize closer to the target allowed by regulators. HEI's dividend payout ratio has been above 100% for the last four years, eliminating dividend growth and capping potential price appreciation. As we see full implementation of the decoupling framework, we expect DPR will drop, ensuring the safety of the dividend. Moreover, management has stated that if DPR levels drop below 65%, that they would consider increasing the dividend. The majority of utility investors buy on dividend yield. We believe that dividend growth could cause potential price appreciation. Matt, CapEx, for, total projected CapEx is split into two categories, maintenance and growth. Maintenance CapEx is spending to maintain current infrastructure and to adhere to environment, environmental regulations. Growth CapEx is large projects still pending legislative approval. We consider growth CapEx value neutral and value TECO and predictable maintenance CapEx. Decoupling, decoupling removes operating cash flow volatility. 
However, unlevered free cash flow is still sensitive to high CapEx levels. Even in the face of rising CapEx, we expect that Hebco will be able to maintain positive free cash flow numbers. Management has stated that they will need to secure additional financing in order to fund future CapEx. Management will need to maintain its equity capital base in order to support its triple B minus credit rating. We project $350 million in additional equity financing through 2016 for this. The dilution impact of the equity financing on EPS is minimal. We valued the utility through three models weighted on their theoretic relevance. We'll discuss the heaviest weight of the two. Discounted cash flow valuation has long been considered the gold standard of utility valuation and is the sole method used by some utility analysts. However, high levels of CapEx add some volatility to HECO's unlevered free cash flows. We weighted our DCF valuation 50%. The other 50% of our valuation was based on comparable multiples. We assigned HECO a utility multiple of 15 times, slightly below the comparable utility average, to account for its foray into alternative energy and its sensitive supply chain. HECO has several investment risks, but we are confident in the long term. Decoupling will remove volatility from fuel prices. Stable operating cash flow will remove pressure from large amounts of financing. HECO stands to benefit from the strong Hawaii economy and low natural disaster exposure, and capital expenses will be re recovered in a timely manner from regulators. HECO has stable cash flows and a strong dividend yield. Now we're going to talk about American Savings Bank. The crippling financial crisis resulted in heavy headwinds for the U.S. banking industry, and the consequences were severe. However, we still remain positive on the Hawaii banking industry because of its healthy economic conditions. Hawaii banking industry is dominated by two large local banks, and there's no major national competitors in the market. ASB, acquired by HGI in 1988, is the third largest bank in Hawaii in terms of assets which focus on consumer banking. We believe net income is the most important valuation for banks, and for ASB, a strong net interest margin and a low provision for loan losses are the key factors. First, ASB has a large low-cost deposit base funding its earning asset at only about a quarter percent, while 81 percent of their earning asset is loan, which yield higher than industry average. The current banking industry is experiencing a steep yield curve, which is very beneficial for ASB, as a short-duration liability cost at the lower end and long-duration asset yield at the high end create a large interest spread for ASB. As a result, ASB has a significantly high net interest margin in comparison to industry average and peers in Hawaii. Second, ASB has a solid credit quality as personal bankruptcy rate decreased and home prices in Honolulu remain steady. The delinquent loan, which is the leading indicator for net charge off, is decreasing, and we expect provision for loan losses to be lower in the future. These are the three methods we use to arrive at our target price of $9.79 for ASB. We use Bank Hawaii as a key comparable in our valuation because it is the best publicly traded bank operating under the same economic conditions as ASB. We also included peers. We use the discounted net income model instead of the free cash flow model because banks tend to have negligible capex and depreciation, thus allowing us to use the cost of equity instead of the WAC as the discount rate. We also use the PE and PB multiple method to further assess ASB's values. We gave Bank of Hawaii's multiples a 20% discount because we feel that Bank of Hawaii has a competitive advantage over ASB in terms of scale and they have lower volatility in earnings. We gave the discounted net income model the heaviest weighting because we feel that ASB's values are primarily driven by its future earnings. One investment risk for ASB is that it has relatively low allowance for loan losses in comparison to peers. While peers such as Bank of Hawaii could release allowance for loan losses to boost earnings, ASB will be limited to releasing allowance for losses, thus pressuring future earnings. With historically low interest rates, loan refinancing is significant, and newer loans in the future will be refinanced at lower yields. However, we assess all three risk factors into our valuation. The impact on our price target was minimal. We're confident that ASB will continuously provide strong net income for HI going to the future. In North America, conglomerates trade at a 10% discount below their pure play competitors. We feel there is potential value in an ASB spin-off and should receive strong consideration by investors. In fact, in the medium to long term, we feel it is extremely probable that HEI will realize full valuation from a spin-off. 
In conclusion, this is a powerful Hawaii pure play with positive upside and a high yielding dividend in a low interest environment that may offer diversification for both U.S. mainland and international investors. Thank you very much. We'd now like to welcome any questions.